Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. Yes, but let's unpack that a little bit more. What kind of relationship? There are all sorts of relationships that exist. For example, Judas had a relationship with Christ, but we know that it didn't last and how it ended up to be. Can we call an abusive relationship a relationship? How about a relationship that exists to take advantage of the other or the ones we couldn't really care less about until we are in need of help? See, what I'm trying to say here is that we need to clarify and you need to clarify as an individual what you mean when you say that Christianity is a relationship and that you have a relationship with God. You might agree with me that the Bible describes us, the church, as the bride of Christ. Now, let's picture a marriage then and imagine that you're getting married to the love of your life and he or she says this, I am marrying you because I love you, but because I also want all the things that come with you. No one in their right mind will right away want to marry somebody that says such a thing. The obvious response should be, wait, what do you mean? What if I didn't have all the things that you apparently wanted? Now then, how come do we think and act as if Christ can be fooled? So, in such a case, it's either God or us that is being fooled. And to count the former a rather ridiculous idea, it's safe to say that we actually think we can fool God and in such process of idea, thought, and lifestyle, fool ourselves from reality. We are the ones who have departed from truth and this is what we're naturally good at. It is our fleshly nature to hide ourselves from God using all sorts of means, much even using Christianity itself. It is like the picture of Adam and Eve hiding from God when he was calling out unto them. This picture right here. It represents us. You see, many a times, which I feel especially in this age, the statement of my personal relationship with God has rather become our scapegoat to live the presumption, to avoid judgment, and the true responsibility to ponder on a truthful relationship. It's too easy, isn't it? You can't judge it, and it is personal. We have become the apparent judge of how we are doing with God. So I think the question shouldn't have only been whether you have a personal relationship with God. I think the more relevant question should be, is it the one that lasts? Is it the one that is on a proper context and ground to keep you safe from the wind? Because as you might see around us as well, many have departed from this relationship or have never been part of this relationship with God. And yet we all still go to church. So if you want to talk about this relationship like a truly committed one, we will need more than our practice statement to hide behind. True relationships are, for example, selfless love, mutual trust, and vision. And of course, no relationships can happen in over just a day. But the core of it all is that one must be in love with him. You must have the desire for him to say that I just want him. Unless, of course, what you want is the benefit of the intimacy without a commitment. God may be gracious, but he is not a fool. And yet, he understands us and he is patient with us. He knows our most fundamental tendency to run and hide from him, and he is still there now where we have left him, calling out unto the state of our soul, Where are you? He waits for you to understand this and to make him the true love, the Lord of your heart. Repentance is for our mind to change and to perceive from this truthful perspective but it is also what we're going to do about it. So I am pleading with you today to follow the light.